Looking for a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I searched high and low for the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news of how we're going to get the lowest price on a high-quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG Satisfaction Guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. When you want to be the best, you can't settle for the rest. There's a reason that Makoni Setup Shop is trusted by more virtual and real-world tracks and companies than any other setup shop in Irish. With partners such as Stafford Motor Speedway, the Nashville Fairground Speedway, Five Flag Speedway, Speed 51, and more, when you want something done right, you go to the experts at Makoni Setup Shop. With setups available for most series on both asphalt and dirt, built by a team of professional builders consisting of some of the top talents on the service, McConey Setup Shop LLC has what you need to hit the track with confidence. Head over to McConeySetupShop.com and learn why McConey Setup Shop is the official setup shop of Richmond Raceway Esports and is partnered with some of the largest names in virtual and real racing. And remember, at McConey Setup Shop, there are setups, but your victories. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. And good evening and good day, everyone, and welcome back here to PTM Racing TV, where we're live here tonight at the world-famous Charlotte Motor Speedway here in Concord, North Carolina. Tonight, America's home for racing track. This is going to be where the truck series of Battle of the Metal Racing League go at it here for tonight's action. Hi again, everyone. I am Christian the Crusader Shriver speaking. Welcome to the show. As we get ready here, let's start them up by taking a look at our Apollo's wraps. Uh, line up here tonight with the uh, weather and the weather in place that we've got in store. This 100 lap ordeal will be perfected on this tri oval section track where the track definitely is going to be a, playing a factor when it comes to the runs and cornering that they'll have to go through all throughout the night. 
Wind doesn't seem to be a problem, neither does the temperature, but you can never be too sure around here. And now let's get down to the business, get to the brass taxes. Here is your Paul's Wraps gritting order for tonight's race. On the pole, the number it'll be the 77. Uh, Bob Hutchins rocking his number is 27 machine. Their 77 machine is outside of him. Will be Matthew Hoffer in the 84. Runner number two, it's gonna be Keith Checkmate Taylor in the eight. Does outside Jason Rife in the 54. Runner number three, Cindy the closer Taylor in the seven to her outside. It's Robert the Rouse Snake Con in the 21. Runner number four, Chantel the throttle pottle in the five to her outside the 872 of Jeffrey Todd Tuff. Uh, final starter here tonight, Nick Kern, the 69 to round out the field. We'll pace him down in right now, get him settled up for this one here tonight. Bob Hutchins will be the starting man. He will have the starting gun on this here. Will he be able to keep it throughout the night? That remains to be the question that we will have to answer later on. A lot of heavy hitters here looking to try to pace themselves in, looking to get themselves going. And a lot of battles here and there that you just cannot miss here on the show. This looks to be a strong, strong race with contenders all around here looking to get a one-up on each other. Charlotte Motor Speedway has been pretty good to us when it comes to the racing and all the battles that come with it. I'm expecting nothing but that here tonight as well from these drivers in this 100-lap ordeal. Four stages tonight. That will be the uh, killing point here for these drivers. That will be what sets them up for this one. As they continue to bring it around town, get this one settled on down, they are waiting for the green flag to come out here. As the pace lights are on the old pace car there, they will come off this time by, though, as they line them up down around out of turn one. Or turn four, I say, to the turn one section. That will be where these drivers hammer down, get into the corners here to fight them off. The green flag flies, and we are underway. And right out of the gate, no surprise here, is Bob going to have the early advantage here with that run, but he's got Keith Checkmate Taylor and Matthew Hopper falling behind. Hopper having to go up high to stay out of trouble. Trying to get a little bit of a run going down there as they lead it back in. They will fire him on down around the corners. Coming back around the corner yet again here. It's a little bit of a battle in the back here as Hopper falls back just a little bit here. He'll have to work around some of that situation in the back though. It is in the top five section. The Rattlesnake Robert Kahn, the 21, getting a little bit up close and personal. What did I say for Jason Wright? The 54 having to try to hold him off, stay in that line of play. Todd Toss falling right behind back there as well, trying to stay in a nice and even kill section. They turn right there with them as they field him in back into the turns. momentum these drivers will be carrying throughout this night here. Cindy the closer Taylor with the advantage to this number seven fast World shot tracker machine trying to get up to that Western Auto 77 of Bob Hutchins. Hutchins though right now with the advantage here as he continues to hammer it in and keep it moving on his end of the spectrum. do that throughout this entire night though that will be the thing I feel like he's gonna have to answer that for himself later on so much at stake and so much going on it can be a bit of a nightmare it can be a bit of a collateral damage if he's not careful he's gonna have to stay focused on those runs and stay focused on those points and make sure that the car is or excuse me the truck is holding up the way it needs to here oh and as I say that out of turn four major problems there big problem sending close to Taylor and him getting right into it there oh good lord and a huge wreck ensues right in front of them there. Big smash up and crash on the inside zone. Todd Tuss involved in that. Hutchins as well. Caution is out. Well, let's take a look at the PTM. It's a replay and take a look at this one. See what happened exactly. This is a bit of a wild situation to start. I would not have expected this kind of a run early on like that, but it happens indeed. Coming out of turn four, a little bump scraping the wall out of turn four for Cindy and Bob. And then Hoffer gets tagged. Nick Kern, you can see Chantel throw Paul trying to stay out of it. Todd, oh man, he gets really up on his lid there, flowing around like a rag doll. Chantel badly damaged. Truck comes to a rest. So is Todd Tufts. And 
I don't think any of them really were able to get things moving around again. We'll take a look at Cindy's area here, see if we can get a better perspective. Uh, when she was going into that corner, she did get a little bit on the throttle end of the spectrum. We got into him there. Take a look at the replay here. Here is the full replay from the back stretch to turn three and four. Bob gets a good run here. Here comes Cindy on the outside. Oh, that little tap right there, man. Cindy just kind of gets into the wall a little bit, almost tags it, but really it was Bob kind of getting that corner panel into her front end. Unfortunately, that start, that chain reaction, that mess, and you can hear the motor is gone. There's no power under the hood, and that means she's going to have to get a tear out there. Get a tear up and a little tow or two, and there's drivers all over the place wrecked in already. Con having troubles, Rice having troubles, Hoffert's having troubles. Well, let's hope they get this reeled in and fired back away right now as we will take it to the caution flag right now. We are under caution and honestly we're at a red flag because a lot of drivers aren't even able to get going. So while they get settled up down around here, we're going to take a quick commercial break. But folks, when we come back, we'll see if they can bring this one back to life and get this one settled down. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the truck series with us on PTM Race TV. Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. When you want to be the best, you can't settle for the rest. There's a reason that Makoni Setup Shop is trusted by more virtual and real-world tracks and companies than any other setup shop in Irish. With partners such as Stafford Motor Speedway, the Nashville Fairground Speedway, Five Flag Speedway, Speed 51, and more, when you want something done right, you go to the experts at Makoni Setup Shop. With setups available for most series on both asphalt and dirt, built by a team of professional builders consisting of some of the top talents on the service, McConey Setup Shop LLC has what you need to hit the track with confidence. Head over to McConeySetupShop.com and learn why McConey Setup Shop is the official setup shop of Richmond Raceway Esports and is partnered with some of the largest names in virtual and real racing. And remember, at McCone Setup Shop, there are setups for your victories. Welcome back here to PTM Racing TV right now as the drivers are currently still getting settled down, trying to get things figured on in after that huge wreck collision they had on the front straightaway due to the unfortunate incident there with Cindy the Colts Taylor and Bob Hutchings. Hutching right now still in pit road trying to get out of there quickly. He finally does so. Co truck comes to a refire here, and uh, he's going to be down quite a bit on the gap wise, but he is going to try to fight back and get up in this one. Chantel and Cindy still in there currently. They are still under caution due to this wreck that they have going on right now, so we will remain under caution for the brief moment here. First caution of the night out of this 100 lap race here. A lot of obstacles these drivers are going to have to fight through and try to get through as time goes on here. Try to survive as well. Obviously, they want to clean up the mess down there and all the parts and issues there. Hopefully, get this one fixed in a little better too. 
Yeah, all right, folks. Scammer just kind of blinked out for a second. That was because of uh, old Rattlesnake Boy having a little bit of an internet issue. He's had some troubles with that all day long, I've been told. So if it does pop up again, just know that we got our camera on him. That's why. So we'll try to keep it off the off him for a little bit though, until we get it, until he gets that figured out and all that. So hopefully it gets fixed in nicely. So Todd Tufts, you see, getting cleared up, cleaned up a bit. He'll be in sec. He'll be up in the top half here. Jason Rife in the 54 right now currently in a pretty good spot as well kind of kind of holding back a little bit of the momentum he's had but he definitely knows what it takes to win he did win back at um back, obviously back at the uh track there at texas more speed with those super late miles division here at battle of Battle racing league and he said since then he really hasn't had much of a break or any luck since then he's been trying to figure out how to get that cleaned up and figured out see if maybe there's a way to continue that hot streak and he told me earlier, man, it's just it's all about patience. But I think he's got he thinks he's got something dialed in for it and ready to go. Lights come off of the pace car there. They're getting settled down, ready to get back into the action into the groove of things. Looks like they will indeed. Chantel and Cindy both back out there, so looks like they will have enough time to get this one fire back away. As they reel them down here, it's odds of preferably has the better line of all of them he'll be in the inside row while the whole field back there just trying to somehow eke out a position or two the stripe here out of turn four they line them up into position waiting for the green flags arrival there's the green flag we're back underway a lot of laps that need to be completed off the gate out of the gate there you see jason Rife already with a bit of a battle and a half there getting up into the binders here going up into the speed zone they'll march them off out of turn two now right Copper and Tufts all kind of getting a little bit into a tangle situation. Almost a three wide lose. They leal it in at turn three. Nick Kern right in position looking for an opening here. Rife down the bottom here. It's Ah Tufts trying to stay with him though. Rife and Hutchings back at it once more. Hoffer takes the race lead away though from both of them as they come across the corners yet again. All about strategy here tonight. Really, how do you pace and how do you set the center away throughout this race? That is going to be the main thing these drivers are looking for all night long. Still even keel, still consistently kidding through the momentum. Robert the Rousnick on the Hendricks.com 21 trying to build up some momentum to get back up there with the pack. Cindy the closer Taylor trying to get some laughs back as well. Nick Kern currently in the way of that. Will that be the case here later on? Will that continue on for them? That, will that be? I don't know. To be honest with you, it seems like they're more focused on just trying to lay loose and trying to stay focused on everything else at the moment rather than trying to be crazy and un unprotected. Dodd on the bottom, current on the outside line, trying to get a run there out of turn four. It looks like he's going to get him as he perfects it down into the tri-oval. A strong showing to start here so far as the rest of the field continues to try to either get back the laps they lost or try to get somewhat remedied into this here. Seems like no hands are being thrown just yet. Nothing needs to worry about that. Hofford right now staying ahead, but how long? Here comes Jason Rife there on the 54, following right behind him. Making a run for it early on as they come out at turn one, as they go into turn one, I should say. They come out of the uh, trifecta, that is the tri-oval. They then center up for this run here, coming down the back straightaway. They are in a full throttle assault, engaged for the race lead. Jason Rife, the inside line, makes a big move around. 
looking for the opening, looking for opportunity. I think he sees it. I think he's going to go for it here as he comes back around one more time. He will indeed get the race lead taken away from Hofford. We have ourselves a new leader. But with Rife trying to get the stage points here, and not points I should say, but the stage win, you got to wonder, is he overdoing himself early? Because if you're doing it too quickly, get a little too aggressive on yourself, it can be a bit of a handful to try to hang on to later. That'll be the interesting part of it all, is how well do these drivers deal with the situations, deal with the runs that are coming their way because when it comes to Charlevoix Speedway, it's all about pacing and control. And he's doing a pretty good job of that right now, in my opinion, what he's having to work with. The back of the pack right now, Cindy the Closer Taylor getting back up there with Bob Hutchings. Hutchings right now still in a pretty favorable spot, I would say. Just trying to stay out of trouble, I think, for the most part on this stage and just give himself a breather or two. I hope to God everything else works out in the end. Easier said than done around here, I've noticed, but that doesn't mean nothing when it comes to possibly perfecting the situation and getting a runner to it. I'm in right now. So the close Taylor and Bob Hutchins back at it one more time around. Looks like these two just cannot seem to get off each other. And a bit of a battle here for, for domination. Cindy trying to outwit and outperform, trying to make up for the mistake earlier on. Seems like she's getting something kind of figured out up there, but the question is, will it hold on for later? As an air caution comes out, unfortunately, it looks like we had some problems there, some issues. Or, excuse me, no, that was not an issue. Actually, that was a stage break. I apologize, folks. Our timer, unfortunately, had a little bit of an update around here tonight, so we had to uh, incorporate it in. So, thankfully, we got it all fixed up on our end now, and it looks a lot, it's a little bit easier to work with, but not so much easier to handle. It's still kind of dealing everything in, but your stage winner will be Jason Wright. With the 54 is Matthew Harvin, the 84. Will be second place to that. So right now the drivers get sell back in, try to get this one figured out after that big wreck they had a little bit ago. We'll see more of the action here as we get things dialed in. Off oh, easy, Bob. You can't just wreck it in like that. Uh, well, while he figures out how to hit where the brakes are and the brake pedal on those things, we'll uh, we'll cut to a quick commercial message. Tonight's race has been brought to you in part by McCoy Sub Shop. One of the only the fastest bass setups come from the McCoy Sub Shop. Find, visit up their website, McCoy Sub Shop, to find the right setup for your next race. By Matt Mills Racing Team. Best Xfinity team out there sponsoring and supporting Pedal Mill Racing League this season. If you want to support Matt Mills Racing Team, visit them up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and check them out on their merchandise and shirt lineup. Buy Bob's Custom Trophies and Gifts. They're supplying up the trophies for the season champs. And if you're looking to get the best hardware gift for your next event, visit up www.bobscustomtrophies.com today. And I did mention trophies. They are working for these beautiful pieces of artwork, so be sure to keep an eye out for those as time goes on here. Buy SimRacingMerch.com, the perfect way to show your passion for sim racing. Buy GridFinder. The best way to find a new league, filter your search by race day, your geographical region, gaming platform, racing sim, and car class. Do you need a broadcaster, live, or desire? You search GridFinder, the home of online racing. By the Butt Kicker, best in performance of feeling on real tracks in the virtual world. The Butt Kicker, feel what you've been missing. By FVGPC.net, matching your want with your wallet. FVGPC.net will always work with your needs to build the best PC at the right price. Buy Brandon Mick Sim Racing. Be sure to go on over to his page and support his merchandise and iRacing journey. Thank you again to Brandon Mick for being a proud supporter of Pedal of the Metal. Buy Pedals Wraps. If you want your vehicle to match your style on the track, you visit up Pedals Wraps for just that. The most affordable designs made at your leisure. And buy Green Tech Energy. 
the natural choice in getting solar company and flare green tech energy is the perfect way to create a healthier world and i'll tell you right now there is nothing healthier in the world right now i think these drivers would like to see than a little bit more green flag racing here Chantel throttle ball is going to get a little bit of an advantage here getting back up into position after the little earlier mishap she had there with uh, that big wreck right up front where you see bob hutchinson Jeffrey Todd tells the major wreck in. It looks like they actually are going into pit road. So kind of curious to know what the strategy was there, what they're planning on. This being our second caution, the first one not being disrupted by our unfortunate incident we had there. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. We're going to have to get a quick little refresh here to the page. This looks like we're having a little bit of a stream lag in there. Well, that might just be the way the drivers are right now. Maybe that's just my eyes. I don't know. At the Havre right now, currently in the second place spot, Nick Kern in the third area. Fourth, Robert the Rattlesnake on. A lot of heavy hitters right now trying to get up to the front, up into position. Nick Kern still searching for his first career win here on Pedal of Middle Racing League and PTM Racing TV entirely. Has yet to revert back into that, uh, that run that he had back in Dover. And I think he's just been trying to get it figured out since then and I think that's the, really the one thing that's holding him back quite a bit is he just he just can't seem to get out of his own head or get out of his own way sometimes when it comes to his runs and I think that does bother him quite a bit I mean I know as a driver that when you get those runs you get those positions and all of a sudden it just seems like you can't get anything going for yourself it, it, it does refer really hard on you and it does make you really think about trying to get things figured in a lot better But I have a feeling that eventually there's just, just a matter of time before everything pulls through and everything gets to where he needs to be. And after that, I think it'll just be a matter of time before you see a lot of heavy makers really being thrown there from the current. So the driver's getting paced back around now. They will settle them back down. This will be the uh, stage break here they were looking for. A little bit of a chance to possibly get going with this race and get a little bit more of a run or two in. Of course, presented here live on PTN Racing TV here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Pedal of Metal Racing League's Truck Series. The next race of their season as they reel it in and out of turn one and two here. That's our little cam we have going on there. It gives you guys a sense of how fast and how powerful these drivers are on those corners and how tight these turns are. This is not an easy track by any means, folks. This is still one of, if not the toughest tracks to win on, as much as it is to control a race on, because you never know what to expect from literally drivers losing all their fuel and running out of time, to tires burning up at the last second and costing them a victory, to just major wrecks in the final corners and the final turns. There is so much Charlotte Motor Speedway holds in its power and holds in its world and its memory that honestly I'd be here all day just trying to count everything in. So we'll wheel them back in out of turn for the sign by. Pace truck comes off the track. That means one thing. We're getting ready to go to the green flag restart. You see that restart zone, that Toyota restart zone on the top right of your screen here. Green flag is out. We're back underway. Now with 25 laps in, will the drivers be able to maintain and perspective to this one in? Stage brakes are going to be a big issue here for some of them. It's going to be a helping hand for others. As they reel it in out of turn two, and Chantel gets a little bump in the rear and sent out of here. And now that just kind of sees her fade a little bit for this stage anyway. Bob trying to get back up into the position. Keeps checkmate Taylor pretty much out of it at this point. Ellie gets some last back. He's going to fly hard around Todd Tufts here. 72 trying to work with him, trying to keep him back behind him, but that's not going to work too well in, Ch in old Keith's mind. More problems for the throttle. She has slowed down tremendously. The motor is gone there on the five. She goes into pit row. That's going to put her a few lap or two down now. She does have an instant repair still saved up, but you only get three around here. You've got to be careful. On board here with Nick Kern currently as he rocks the Toyota Tundra right into position. Crossover on the trioval. Matthew Offer trying to stay in the nice even keel line, trying to stay ahead of the problematic zone that is that trioval section. 
It is a disaster waiting to happen. If you're not careful around here, you've got to be aware of that spot. You've got to be careful of it. It can shape you up and ship you out quicker than you know it. And I think Kern knows that all too well. He's going up high right now. Hoffer going low. There's two lines to hit. He's in one of them. Charging back through the field here. Right now on the back, Cindy the Colts of Taylor back on the lead lap. As Todd Tufts tries to hold her off, the Navidium 72 trying to give a little bit of a run to that track for both Fast Pro Shops. Number seven as she marches her way through the field and into position here. A strong run earlier on from the closer. No surprise here. She's always been one to put on a closing act or performance every time she comes out to race. And it seems like every time we see her, it just gets better and better for her because it seems like she's just getting more wins and more times in victory lane. Gentel Autopilot trying to get ahead back up into the gap here. She knows she's in trouble, though. They have already lapped her in about two or three laps. That's going to hurt her chances, hurt her opportunity here. Matthew Hoffert and checkmate right now in the game, in the zone, trying to stay with it, trying to wheel it in. Side by side, they take it down once more here. No inches gained, no inches gave. Everybody wants to not cause any more issues. They don't want to see another caution come out until that, obviously that stage caution has to come out. But it always is in the back of your mind. As a driver, you just know one small move, one wrong move, and all of a sudden it literally is time for another caution. It's time for another situation there because you clearly wrecked in out of that place in that spot. Kern trying to hold his line, keep up the second place spot right now. Jason Bright, though, man, I'm telling you, he is just a bad, fast animal tonight. Charging quick and charging hard, not giving any inches to anybody out here. You know, he said to me earlier that he felt like he needed to get another win in if he could prove himself. Well, I mean, what a way to do it. Two series and two wins. And this one right now is a dominating performance, to put it nicely here. He has yet to give anything up. But the pack right now is right there with each other still. It's it's still anybody's race on that end of the spectrum. Closing back around yet again. Here the mouth the roll Reynolds Snake Robert Con trying to get the Hendrix.com motorsports machine up ahead. Uh, Matthew Offord and Key Checkmate Taylor right now. Checkmate though is in the way to possibly make any moves or any situations there. I bet you five bucks right now. Con is just feeling like he's getting blocked and he doesn't like any of that. He wants to try to make a move or two. He's just fighting for everything he's got though to get a run off these guys and try to stay with it. But again, you know, is it going to be able to hold up the way he would like to? later on because it just doesn't seem like it's doing that for him at all here. Sam Bellino going to say get up the wheel 54 go Jay and then save the entire 54 are going to need the Kenneth Crawford saying hashtag team rail snake hashtag Ken the turn the burn. Great to have you all on board here tonight. And speaking of back on board here, here comes that five. Chantel Throttle Bottle trying to push back up to the front after that little incident she had a minute ago. And she's fighting the fresh set of tires. Just goes to show you how hard they will charge around and how quickly they can get you back into a run or two. She is gaining ground quickly, trying to make a slight big maneuver. Kern's falling back a little bit, and Robert Kahn taking over second place now, even though Checkmate is ahead of him. He's still a couple laps down here. Chantel really putting up a fight there to Robert, trying to get ahead. These two obviously have a little bit of a growing rivalry and pains from all the times they've raced out on the track and out on the times. To me, it's amazing they've been able to hold out this rivalry and all that situation that they've done here on P10 Racing TV as long as they have, but at the same time, I mean, it's no surprise that they really have such a good friendship and a good battle with each other. 
but I almost can tell you right now, it's just all about timing and situation here for these drivers. Case in point right now, Checkmate and Chantel back up into the uh, front runner spot to make some moves and make some passes here. But it is still at the moment, the Rattlesnake, Robert Kahn having to deal with the company and the situation there. He's charging though, he's giving her everything she's got around there. Send to the closer, Taylor. Nick Kern now kind of firing back on all cylinders here as they push themselves back up into position. Matthew Hoffert having a little bit of a run or two here. Hoffert right there on the back end of Nick Kern. Kern trying to hold off the Hoffy camp. Hoffert trying to make a move or two here. Puts him to make a little sway into his game. His game plan obviously pretty simple. He wants to try to make passes quick and make them and quick him hard. Curran trying to hold him off though, trying to stay away from that here. Tires are going to be a big saving point. And I think right now that's what they're worried about is the final laps of the stage are coming into play. Coming around out of turn three though, Jason Wright once again. Tire saving coming into play. He has five sets of them he can use here tonight as they wheel them back out of turn four, the final laps of the stage coming to a close. Rife looks like he's pretty much all but wrapped up this stage, and I don't think he's gonna be looking back anytime soon, especially the way things are gonna play out. But Robert Kahn and Cindy Taylor will be put back up into possible territory of getting him here. We'll see if that is gonna be the case here, but Rife does win the next stage. So stage two goes to Jason Rife. Well, it's been an early battle here for the drivers and a pretty strong start for others. Only the third caution, the first one coming at that big wreck on the front straightaway involving obviously about half the field, if not more of them. Rife was included in there, but he managed to get the truck fixed in a little bit better than everybody else and really making do with what he had. So it's been an interesting strategy, an interesting run up here with only nine drivers though so far. Will Jason Rife be able to hold off some of the best and some of the finest that come around here on Pedal of Metal? We'll soon find out when we return here to PT and Racing TV. Looking for a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. I searched high and low for the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG satisfaction guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. When you want to be the best, you can't settle for the rest. There's a reason that Makoni Setup Shop is trusted by more virtual and real-world tracks and companies than any other setup shop in Irish. With partners such as Stafford Motor Speedway, the Nashville Fairground Speedway, Five Flag Speedway, Speed 51, and more, when you want something done right, you go to the experts at Makoni Setup Shop. With setups available for most series on both asphalt and dirt, built by a team of professional builders consisting of some of the top talents on the service, McConey Setup Shop LLC has what you need to hit the track with confidence. Head over to McConeySetupShop.com and learn why McConey Setup Shop is the official setup shop of Richmond Raceway Esports and is partnered with some of the largest names in virtual and real racing. And remember, at McCauley Setup Shop, there are setups for your victories. Huh. 
with the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. Welcome back to the show right now. The drivers are currently still settling down, getting things fixed on in after the uh, stick. Or the second caution of the night, or there's a meeting second stage of the night, third caution, if you will. Second stage caution, I guess you could say. The only only one of the three that we will have here tonight. They're on the third stage as we get settled in. Currently, Jason Rife and Robert the Rattlesnake Con having a little bit of a get go at it here. Rife has pretty much all but dominated this one so far. Been flying a nice, steady Eddie race here tonight. Has been very dominant in his performance but i have a feeling that eventually right now he's currently looking to possibly build up the momentum build up the mo the motor around here and get something going for himself matthew hoffer and cindy taylor right behind them obviously in that category as well cindy a great closer and she's been doing pretty good so far the only little slip up she's had was basically right on the first couple of laps or so when that first caution came out obviously that big wreck Coming out of turn four, crashing them both, then getting into a major territory damage there. But ever since then, it's pretty much been smoother sailing here for the closer. Hoffy, though, he knows a thing about too about winning here at Shaw Moore Speedway. This is where he got his very first career asphalt victory at. He won it in the late models division back last season. And he told me earlier today when he returned here, he said point blank. I miss this track, I love this track, and I just honestly, I had to come back and try to run it to the best of my abilities. I just, I miss this place, and I love this track more than anything. Yeah, I'm hoping here tonight that, you know, we can finally get this uh, Mountain Dew 84 into victory lane. It's been a while, and he would like to change that here. To do so, he'll have to try to take down some top-tier guys. Obviously, Robert Kahn has just been a bad man all day long. Will he be able to continue that streak and continue that run? Jason Reif, though, I'd be honest with you, folks. I don't know if anybody can catch this guy. I think he's just the. Ba I think he's just way too fast and way too strong on his runs. And I feel as though this will be the opportunity for him to really show why he is here to stay and why he is here to continue his legacy and pedal the metal and continue his runs. We're gonna see though. Cindy, the closer Taylor, gonna be right up there with them as well as the lights off the pace car. Trucks settle up down and around here on the front straightaway. Line them up in a position here, run them down, looking for the green. There's the green. Off the start, big advance to Jason Reif. Gets the uh, run off there out of turn one, lining him back in. Matthew Hoffert and Cindy Taylor trying to catch up to him. You got to wonder how much is Reif going to tear those tires apart? How much will he run this truck into the ground tonight? He told, you know, he said earlier as well, he's just trying to get himself a little bit of an opportunity to, you know, really prove himself and really show that he did not win that race by fluke last time at Texas. He wants to show he can do it on a full length run. Right now, he's definitely making a believer out of me for that. Nick Hearn, though. I mean, if there's been a guy that honestly has been kind of that play to guy, it's him, man. The East Sparkle Toyota Tundra has yet to win on the circuit. Now he's going up against guys like Keith Checkmate Taylor, Matthew Hoffer, and Bob Hutchins. Heavy hitters and names that are proven champions, commodities here on the show. Be interesting to see if they can pull something through here tonight. Right now, as they lead him down the front straightaway, Taylor falling back just a little bit. Bob Hutchins right there with him, trying to stay in the run, stay in the ground. Rife and Cindy may have a little bit of a battle in pursuing here. Robert Kahn having to go into pit road, unfortunately having a little bit of problems with that internet I mentioned earlier. The motor also seems to be having a little bit of a headache or two. It's cost him dearly here, and Cindy at uh, turn four. Once again, that turn four bugs are just getting her tonight, man. She is having all sorts of problems down there, which is very uncharacteristic here for the closer. But it seems like maybe there's not the run she's looking for or not as much momentum to carry through. 
Don's going to fall back and lap down now because of his troubles here, and that's going to hurt him more than anything. Anything else gets a little loose at turn four. He saves that one, but almost sends her off to the distance. Brought her back nicely there, and Chantel Tuatapato getting one step closer, getting her full lap back. She's currently right there with the drivers. Comes right out, trying to push it in, and completely back in at turn two. Jeffrey Todd Tuts looking on from a distance, possibly just trying to figure out what will happen later on. City of the Culture Taylor now putting it back up to the boot to Jason Rife. Rife trying to hold on. We're about ready to reach the halfway point here as we got one more lap to do so, and then it will be halfway time. Currently Rife with the advantage. Cindy, though, not giving an inch to her. Matthew Hopper and Nick Hearn kind of falling back into kind of coming up closer and closer here. Nick Hearn still dealing with lap traffic. Bob Hutchins down a lap. So is key checkmate Taylor. Bob needs to get back ahead of both drivers to get his full lap back. Same for Chantel. Con, well, let's just say I think he's just trying to find a place to hide because I don't think he's too happy about this right now. Kern currently in fourth, up five spots where he started out here tonight. He is your number, he is your top guy of the night when it comes to being the hard charger, that's for sure. Con and Chantel back at it once more. Charlotte Motor Speedway been good to both of them on multiple series and multiple versions of racing. But in this case, really, I would say Chantel's probably got the better of Con on a few of them here. But Robert is no slash to any track or any race he gets in contact with. He always puts on a fight and puts on a show when he can here. He's doing just that right at the moment here. But right now, let's take a look at our lap times here and show you the difference between Taylor and Wright. You wouldn't have guessed it going off what we're seeing here, but Wright is kind of slowed up slightly here on those runs and on those corners. I think Taylor is starting to notice it here. If she catches on to it pretty quickly, she might actually be able to make a run for it later on, but I got a feeling she's honestly just kind of playing more of an even keel to stay under consistency roll rather than trying to push the limits right now. No, no nothing taken on the uh, pushing limits racing league that she runs as well. She's been dominating over there too as well. I mean, it's a great, great group of guys over there and gals as well. Man, they always have uh, been talking with them a few times and talk with the owner as well he's he's always really good about folks really good about people as well so i would say if you guys are interested in trying to try out a different series every week i'd definitely look into pushing limits racing league and have a word from damon Twenty-one are gone, and Bob Hudson's right now back at it once more. These two started the rivalry back at Chicago Land Speedway in week two. Bob made his debut there in that Western Auto AC Delco machine. He told me point blank when he joined the league, he's like, I wasn't expecting to be such a hard charger or a runner around here, but these guys and gals are great to work with. They're good to have fun with, and to be honest with you, I always just love a good challenge, and they certainly put up a challenge when we get on track. I would say more than anything too, he is a bit of a challenge to beat out there. I actually ran with him back at Talladega just a couple of days ago. In that little highlight video you saw, yeah, that was uh, that was my car you saw there. But uh, man, I'll tell you, he's fast as it gets on those tracks. He's fast as it gets on any track. He puts up a fight. So, but it was an honor to run him and run everybody else there that day as we are currently now seeing a change up in the leader position. Jason Wright falling way behind the field here. Problems with a 54. I'm not seeing any damage on that right side corner panel. So I'm presuming, oh, wait a minute. Yep, I see it now. There is damage on the right side. Producers, give me a camera angle on that for me, please, right now. No, wrong camera angle, you dorks. Very wrong camera angle, thank you. All right, so you take a look right here. You can see that stroke. You can see the strokers, number 54, Silverado. The right side of that machine has got damaged up. Must have smacked the wall coming off that exit. That cost him precious time. Cindy the Closer Taylor makes him pay for it. But even she's slowing down quite a bit here. Having to let on and Taylor run around over there. Brother Taylor right now currently. If you can find a way to somehow get back on the lead lap, I would be amazed because he's so many laps down right now. It's not even funny. Robert Conn kind of the same ordeal. He's about three he's about three laps or so down right now.
Checkmate currently about seven, I believe, at the moment. Yeah, he's in just desperate need of help. He needs help badly. Jason Rife, a little damage on that right side. Definitely made a big difference there, and it's hurting him. You can see the momentum starting to fade off just a little bit. It's starting to slow down. If you don't believe me, well, here's a look at Hoffer and him right now when it comes to the comparisons. Hoffer just getting him every lap when it comes to building up momentum, building up speed. And building up speed around here is a crucial part of racing. It's a crucial part of the event. And you can see it's just a change up in gear between them. Well, that time did not get as much of a speed off on him. Oh, interesting here. Oh, it'll be interesting to see if maybe there's a little bit of a chance situation there for him. As they take it to the chopper cam right now, to take a look at Nick Kern and Bob Hudson's going out of here. Back around out of turn four here. They will harm her down. Nick Kern currently still in the uh, fourth place spot. start getting that rabbit's foot out. I think Jason Wright might need it. He's fought, that machine has got a lot of damage up on that one. I don't know if he's going to be able to bring it back on this stage. He has two opportunity. He has one more opportunity in the final stage to pull it away. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, lap times wise, and right now everything going on, they only have an hour and 15 to work with, and I think maybe they're not going to be able to make it here. Matthew Hopper on the outside line with Bob Hutchins in the inside zone corner, paling him off down the back straightaway. I don't even think the drivers realize like what time it is or what they have here at stake. Remember, these drivers do work on a time limit, so they have to be careful about that and be aware. Obviously, unlike a live television where we really just don't care, we just do what we can, but here it's a uh, complete opposite. When you're running iRacing, they set the lobbies up to be a certain spot in time, and that's how long they run for. If you don't get those laps in and get it done, then well, it really doesn't matter. And currently, they got about 30 minutes here to get going. Coming back around right now, still it is the playing game here for Bob Hutchins, just trying to get himself a chance at getting up to these guys, get back into the run of things. But Chantel definitely not far behind him on that, about five seconds back, even though it seems like a bit. That's honestly not that much when you think about it. Still under green here, final laps up. This stage is coming to a close though, and then we will have the main event lap coming up. That'll be where really this starts to change up and starts to take taste the pace. Sandy the closer tail, then you can just see, man, she is just running with the best of them. That'll flag out now, so the stage comes to an end here, as we mentioned just a minute ago. So Cindy definitely going to be uh, working off that and working off a little bit of that success here. It's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out. So Hoffert, fourth, Todd Tufts getting fifth in this one. Third to Nick Kern, second to Jason Ripe, and then Cindy the Closer Taylor finishing uh, first in the stage here. Now here comes the tricky part, folks. You see the lap counter there. We're down about the 35 laps here. Right now the race is currently at 50 minutes almost. They're at 47 minutes and 30 seconds at the moment. They have approximately about a half hour to get this one finished out and done in. 
So, if they stay away from Rex and all that, they will get it in. If they don't, then that time management might be able to pull out the old Sparky situation. And you might see an opening be risen upon that. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry I was a little bit off pace in talking right here. But uh, looks, I know we do have a little bit of news I can now share with the world here, and I believe we will. Uh, I think he has given us permission to do this here. So, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next week here, we will be at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. However, I will not be alone in the booth. No, sir. I will be joined by a reigning and I'll be joined by a two-time reigning world racing champion, and that's not i racing wise. That's legit real life. He will be joining us here on the show for the very first time as a broadcast commentator by the name of Finn Robinson. So be sure to tune in tomorrow, next week to catch all the action and honestly maybe catch a little bit of British humor in between me and him. So it should be great stuff. The American Vert meets the British man. Oh, that's, that's, that's going to be a nightmare. I'm going to love it. All right, so that's next week, obviously, and obviously that after next week, then it'll be one more week of action. Homestead, Miami will be the final resting grounds for these drivers. Charlotte Motor Speedway tonight, man, this is going to be really where points come into play and really sets little, settles scores and sets them in for the run or two. And I'll be honest with you, I just, I just have that feeling more and more that the way things have played out, the way things have gone down, that it's really just settling up for a crazy finish in between. On Thursday night, we will be at Martinsville for these pedal metal boys and girls. And then the next Thursday, they will be at North Wilkesboro. I can't wait to call that one. And then they will end it at Richmond. So that will be the final race of the season. But I, I guarantee it, man. North Wilkesboro Hall, oh, yeah. I love that track, and I love watching the drivers go at it there. So, But with these new Super Late Mile cars, I, I'll be honest. Those things are just a handful to drive anywhere. I don't know how they'll handle them there. So... Hopefully it's not too bad, and the race is pretty good. They've got two to go here on the uh, pit stop here, so time will definitely be of the essence here on the restart. They only have about 35 minutes now left on the clock, or excuse me, 25 minutes left on the clock, I should say. I don't know, they're going to be cutting it close, so that's for sure. At lap 70, we will be back under green, and lap times right now, folks, they're looking at the 30, the hot, the high 30, uh, low 31s as their uh, point of reference. So you can do the math there. It's gonna be a tight one though to get that finished in. If they have another caution, it'll pretty much be then just a matter of time management. So Matthew Hoffer in the 84 Mountain Dew machine with that East Barco. Machine the 69 of Nick Kern, the hard charger of the night. Then they got Jason Wright currently racking and stacking the Stokers long cut winter green 54 machine. Gonna have to try to take it down to the Bass Pro Shots tracker boats seven of Cindy the Closer Taylor and the rest of the field almost on the full lead lap. Bob Hutchins is back there as well as Chantel the throttle bottle. The only two that are not unfortunately are Robert Laurel Snake on and Keith Checkmate Taylor. Jack Mann, I gotta believe, is really disappointed with this one here tonight. Not the performance he was looking for. Not one of his better races, if you if you know what I mean. And if I'm look, I honestly haven't took a look at the points wise here, but I am very curious to know where we're at there at the moment. So hold on a minute. We're gonna take a look at the uh, the points ranking here for the uh, truck series here. And right now, yeah, currently uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a fight, dog fight between Keith and Cindy. Keith right now is about 20, well, 22 back of her. And Noah Healy is quite a bit back as well, but he's not running with us here tonight. So that's going to be, a, or Brian Healy, I should say. So that's kind of a disappointment shock in there. Meanwhile, in the uh, SLM series, that's a bit of a dogfight there too. Cindy still with the lead there, but by nine points to Chantel throughout a bottle. And Keith Checkmate Taylor and Sunny Seven. So right now, those two ladies will be the ones to watch out for in the next closing races so i'm interested to see what happens there what goes down but for now anyway though it's all about timing and pacing yourself into this one base cars lights are off drivers are set and ready to go to the restart zone 
Remember, they cannot go until the green flag comes out for them. Will City the Calder Taylor be able to put this bad girl up front into the victory lane circle, or will Jason Rife finally get a series win he can be proud of and show to his fans and friendly, know that he's finally got one of the books. On a hard charge, we've got only a few minutes left. They gotta get it going. Green flags back on now. Now it just pretty much turns into a dash for cash, if you will. It's just basically sort of try to survive and hope for the best. Running it through down the back straightaway early on. Key checkmate Taylor still trying to somehow remedy this one. Al Hoffer trying to stay. This slides a bit ahead of the firm under the turns. Oh no, there's problems down there. There's big problems. Key checkmate Taylor goes for a spin. Caution comes out, and that's pretty much going to seal checkmate's fate, unfortunately. A little bit of damage there on the five of Chantel throttle pile, but really the damage was already done going into that turn. Jason Fife was already loosey-goosey and all the problems just kind of stirred in from there. Take a look at the PT Mission replay and find out what happened here exactly. That was definitely a little bit of a hard run and a charge there on that end of the spectrum, but I'm interested to see what happened exactly here. Here's the PT Mission replay. So Rife having to fall back a slight bit. Offer gets in the walk protection too and uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's nowhere to go there, man. There's just nothing you can do. And Chantel, obviously, with what she had to work with, what she was doing, honestly, I think that was probably the better maneuver that she could have done there. Unfortunately, though, it still ends up having to keep spinning around. Racing ordeals, man. You got to watch out when they get into the wall, and it's hard to back off when you're in that run. But, you know, these guys and gals are working off milliseconds of timing. Remember that, too. So they are not exactly getting too much breathing room or chances to make mistakes like that. They have to be careful about where they go in and where they come off of. And now we officially only have about 20 minutes remaining on the clock. And that's not very good in this case, considering you see how many laps we have left here. If we was to do the math right now and we subtract them in, 20 minutes on the clock. And if somehow went back green flag racing, it's 30 laps of pop, so... That's what, 40 laps in total they can get in if they went green? I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to hurry, though. This is probably, this has to be the last caution, I'll ask you, or they're going to, they're not going to finish this race. They judge them by lap times and all that, so. So you get a picture X view here tonight, obviously a beautiful crowd and scenery here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, beautiful facility, beautiful area and landmark obviously here in Concord, North Carolina. This track, so much history to us, so much that has played host to this track, to this world. Names like Dale Earnhardt Sr. and Jr., Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, Bob Flock, Red Baron. And many other great names of the sport. Obviously, the Andre Andretti have brought, I've run here. There's, there's just so many names out there, man. It's, it's hard to really keep up with these guys and gals. There's so much that goes down here, so much on that. But, I mean, you know, when you come to a track like this, it's almost kind of sacred. Like, you just you want to run your absolute best and prove that you can be hanging with those guys and gals that have come before us. But, I mean, it's, it's a Dutch different world now from what we we're dealing with. Obviously, this virtual world racing. You know, someone asked me earlier in the comments section, it was like, you know, does someone actually wheel the car to victory lane? Or, do, you know, they actually have a computer helping out? No, it's, there's no help with these things, man. You figure them out and you race them. Like, there is no AI support. There's nothing. It's you get in there, you wheel them yourself, and you have the truck or car at the same time. And that's all you get. You know, that AI racing is built and designed to have the legit simulation be as legit as possible. And it can be crazy as heck, and it can be awesome as it gets, but it, it's, definitely a, it's definitely a handful out there. So, well, nevertheless here, they will uh, line it back here out of turn two. Running them back through the field, down the back straightaway. Cindy the closer, Taylor, Nick Kern will be the front runners. Nick Kern. 
I gotta at least keep a very, very close eye on that clock, because when they get back to racing, they're only gonna have about 15 minutes left now. We're at 57 minutes and 45 seconds right as we speak here, completed. And remember, there's only an hour and 15 that they are allowed. They are told in the driver's meeting, you only get an hour and 15 to do this. We will not go over under. Sam Tobliano saying, Jason, don't need the rabbit's foot. He's a whole rabbit. <laughs> No, at that point, then you'd be making rabbit stew, and I do not need some rabbit stew around here, my friend. Lucky dog candidate. He checkmates Taylor gets around. Gonna somehow try to bring it back in. Robert Kahn has called it a night. Unfortunately, the trouble's continuing to persist. He will be taken out of action here. Tough break there for the rattlesnake. So they'll lead him back in right now. Get him settled down. When we come back, we're going to finish this race out. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this quick commercial message. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's race has been presented and brought to you in part by McConey Setup Shop, Matt Mills Racing Team, Bob's Custom Trophies and Gifts, SamRacingMerch.com, BuyGridFinder.com. By the butt kicker. By FEGPC.net. By Brandon Minix Sim Racing. By Paul's Raps. And of course, also by Green Tech Energy. Thank you again to the proud supporters and sponsors here that have helped get these guys and gals off the feeding, off the footing here. As we bring things back to normal, back to reality, we are set the restart zone Cindy trying to continue a perfect season take home two seasons for the price of one she's been dominant all season round all the time all the game plans she's made up and seems like she's just getting better and better every time out can she continue the momentum and pull off a victory they have 15 minutes officially now to get this one in there's no more hustling and bustling here guys it's you do it or you don't Green flag flies, we're back underway. The closer off the start has an early advantage. Tofford right down the bottom getting a good push off. Kern trying to get back in it. 25 laps remain or until we finish this race out. Rife getting back into the throttle and into the thing of things. I think he knows what he's got to do to try to get up there. Taylor's just going to try to hold off a whole field and a half to stay ahead of, the, of this group right now as they charge them down on the front straightaway. Bob getting a little bit closer. Three wide sloop possibility there out of the bat on the front stretch, but they managed to hold that off. Chantel sees opportunity. She steals it from uh, Mr. Bob. Cindy is pushing quicker and more ahead of the field, just getting an absolute run and a half around here. Lining it back around, Todd Tufts. Problems there as they get a little bit sideways, a little squirrely, if you will. Doesn't seem to affect him too much here, but it will definitely be a key factor role later on. Here comes Jason Reif now, Mal moving through the field. He's got Hoffer right in his sights. Can he make a pass and make it go quickly here? He's going to have to hurry. There's time at the essence. He knows he cannot make any more mistakes. No more little slip-ups, nothing. He's got to stay focused. Well, I think he might have found the whole rabbit there, J or old Sam, old buddy, because I think he's got a little bit of a run or two going for it. Cindy Taylor is not exactly holding off the field. Nick Kern and Jason are catching up to her. They were waiting for the right time to strike. I think they might have found opportunity when they needed to. Only 22 laps remain, but we are running closer at a time. 14 minutes left on the clock. Kern and Rife battling it out side by side down out of turn four. Rife trying to hang in there, stay ahead. Kern trying to push forward up yet again. At this point, I think Rife is actually hoping for a little bit of a break or a little bit of help here from Cindy, but I, I just don't see her getting it. I just don't see him going to get it. He checked my Taylor now, pushing back up ahead. Maybe he's actually getting a little bit of a trap. Actually, it's what's happening here. Look at this. Checkmate actually lining up behind the rear end there. Right. Jason actually is getting a little bit of that trap off of Checkmate. Oh, but I don't think Checkmate realized what he was going to 
going to do is now he came out of that corner. And now Rife had a little bit of momentum built up actually to get up to Cindy. And now Rife having all sorts of problems trying to hold off the checkmate camp here as he leads it back out of turn three. Rife with a full blown, full throttle assault here. Look at the lap times here. Look at this. Taylor is falling back behind. I, I'm not sure if she's thinking about trying to save a long term strategy here or maybe she's just trying to save anything here. Rife is pushing up for everything he's got to get up to her. Gotta believe a little bit of help too coming from the Mr. Checkmate probably was not too much of a factor, but more or less kind of a saving grace here for Rife. Problem is now with Taylor just kind of fouling him there, not exactly helping him out. That's not gonna do him much good. Gotta bite the fingers a little bit here because Rife is right there with them. But I just can tell you right now, man, Jason has got to burn those tires up really badly. Those things have got to be smoking up a little bit. He's hurting. I can tell right now the truck is starting to fade a little bit. That's not good. It is starting to fade. It wasn't in the runs I saw off earlier when he got around Nick Kern. Kern, I think, is falling back behind, unfortunately, due to his strategy and not doing what he's thinking he should do. Here we go, though. This is going to be the move that saves or breaks this race. Cindy backs off a little bit slower out of the corner. Here it comes Rife inside. Ten minutes remain. Inside, there's the pass. Rife gets it. We have ourselves a new leader. But now Cindy the closer Taylor, I got to believe. Not going to take too kindly of that. I guarantee you she's going to go for that run and that pass quickly here. Looking to make the move, looking for a run off that, off of that. It's close, it is close, but no cigar here for Cindy. Right behind them all here, Hop, Matthew Hoffer, Bob Hutchins, and Chantel throw out a bottle in a battle for fourth year. Bob, the damage though on that right front end there, as you saw earlier, ends up slowing him down a little bit and hurting his chances here. The rear end of Hoffer also has some damage there, Chantel. Really one of the only drivers really hasn't even a chance to get back up to him. Doing everything they can here. Good Lord, Jason Rife, man, talk about full throttle assault, and he is just hammering it down off those exits. But the problem is, is Cindy's getting him right back out of it. He's getting a good entry, but she's getting a much stronger exit. distance and gap between these drivers and where they lie in position in the run time is of the essence and they just it's kind of it's kind of a little bit of a earth shattering little uh little tidbit or two kind of a little fingernail biting if you will because with only 15 laps to go they can get this race in they've just got to stay focused though Rife right now, I think is honestly, I think he was just thinking maybe he was going to get a short-term race. I don't think he was expecting a long-term race now. How much has Stindy saved the tires? How much has she given up to him early? I can tell you right now, the way she fell back behind, it looked like Taylor was going to start to go for a run and a half. There's Keith going to go into pet road, and I think he's just going to call it a night. Unfortunately, the trouble is continuing for him. And it looks like Cindy the Colder Taylor goes into pit road as well here. Wait just a minute here, folks. Keith and Cindy both in. Chantel takes back over in position. All of a sudden, the game plan might have changed. Fuel strategy might actually just be the thing that I think we weren't even thinking about here tonight. Remember, they only get 50% of fuel, but I was more worried about their tire setup here. No, Cindy and Keith both went into pit road. They're going to be a lap or two down until the drivers, Jason and Chantel, go in. But I wonder, and I question, how much did they have saved up in pit road? Here is our pit strategy right now up on the screen. And you can see Rife, man, he's been out there longer than the throttle. And Chantel, obviously, that fuel run, I think, may have been what might just save her night. She's got a good run going for her. But Todd Tufts is not far behind either. Bob Hutchins. I think honestly, I think he's just trying to survive and secure something here. Give her all she's got. There it is. Rife has to go into pit road. I was wondering about that. And with a few more laps for the throttle, does Chantel have it here? Oh, wait a minute. Down the back straightaway. Problems for the Hoffer camp. 
Jumps to a sun hole. Flagman does not call for caution. Neither do the race officials. Hold on a minute. Let's take a look at the replay here. It was right off exit. Hoffer just kind of did it to himself. He was trying to get a good run and get pushed, but he forgot that it's a little bit of a slick spot down there. You just can't overdrive it there. Unfortunately, he overdrove it too much, and it cost him majorly there. Now Bob Hutchins and Chantel throttle bottle going to go out of here for position. Bob trying to get something up on the throttle. Chantel trying to hold on. Jason Reif gets out of there before Cindy. But the closer is catching up quickly, and so is her brother. Reif, I think, is just trying to hold off, trying to get out there quickly before she does. Oh, my. Down that back straight away they lead in. Oh, it's a full throttle assault there from Cindy on the outside, pushing in. Right trying to hang with her. Cindy is going to get back her spot here, but back up to the front here with only a few laps remaining. We're down to nine. Chantel and Bob going to go out of here. Bob Hutchins going to give her everything she's got. And Chantel doing the same here. This is a war of racing and a war but of Canadians here. All three in the top three right now are Canadian. Bottle, Hutchins, and Tufts. And it looks like Bob is faltering, fell off. There is that fuel strategy coming into play once again. Eight laps to go. For a driver that literally wrecked on the first lap of the race, on the couple, first couple laps of the race, I should say, she sure made it back pretty quickly and made a good run off of it. I'll give her credit for that. Jason Wright right now just just really trying to hold out, trying to stay alive here. Currently faltering back slightly. But he is gaining ground there on Cindy the closer Taylor once again. And I keep saying that because again, if the throttle has to go into pit road, Todd will have to as well. We saw the pit strategy earlier, and if you missed it, let me show you it again. This is how pit strategy looks at the moment. And Tufts and Pottle. Well, let's just say the way they fueled him in and the way they put him in. Uh, I would say right now they are going to be cutting this extremely close. Did they save enough is my biggest question. Did they save enough fuel to end this night out? Yeah, you can tell she is slowing down tremendously, though. I think, honestly, tough students kind of the same, but catching her just a little bit. The reason why he slowed down is just to conserve the fuel. Right now, biggest thing is we'll be trying to actually clutch in, as you saw with, Je with old Daryl Arnold last night at Iowa. He was trying to save his fuel run a little bit longer. He's working out okay here. Yeah, Kern, the 69, he's Sparko machine now going ahead of the five. Gets his time back and his lap back. Five to go for the throttle in the five. Todd Tubbs not done with this one just yet, though. This is really looking like back at Dover International Speedway just literally a couple of weeks ago. Pit strategy came into full effect. It won some races. It cost others the chance. And look at this now. Back up to the front. Cindy the Colder Taylor and Jason Wright back at it once more. Here they come out of the front straightaway. Battle and a half here, and this could be for the this is for third right now, but it could be for the lead, depending on the fuel run that the throttle and tufts get here. Right on the outside, Cindy can't hold him off. He's coming quickly. This is not the time to be saving now, Cindy. You better get going here, girl. If she wants to, she wants to have a chance at that. Jason Rife is putting everything at full effect. The throttle is slowed down tremendously here. I don't know if she's lost fuel or if she's really having to go into pit road. I think she's going to stay out here. I think she's feeling like she can hang on. She's running out of fuel, though, that's for sure. Todd Tuss thinks he's got enough to finish it. We're going to three laps to go. Todd has never won here on PTM Racing TV before. Can he change that tonight? He's ran a pr pretty much a clean race for the most part throughout this one. And he's looking to try to finish this out. The throttle's slowing down tremendously here. She is trying to save that last bit she has. Well, Miz, now the boy, now Cindy and Jason have a chance to catch up to her. And they're getting some serious momentum on her.
Laps winding down, time running out. Who is going to win this one out? Todd Tuff stays out, and he's only got two laps remaining. Chantel really slowed down, let's just say that right now. And Jason Reif and Cindy definitely know it. This is almost turning into a Dale Earnhardt Jr. finish just only about five or six years ago. All right, excuse me, that was about 10 or so years ago. My apologies. Jason Reif right now trying to desperately to get up there to the Conrads here. Chantel and Todd falling ahead. Todd is still out there firing all cylinders. Does he have enough fuel, though? He seems like he's got it. He might just have it. Chantel giving it one last little push and they have to try to get up there. Reif needs an opening from either or of them, if not both of them. But I don't think they're going to get it. Coming out of turn three. Turn four, Todd Tufts. Not only is he going to win his first time out on PT Race TV, he does so on literally a limited supply of fuel. Wow, what a crazy finish there. And got to believe he was thinking that was a hard finish. A half decent Rife gets just barely past the throttle, so it does turn into a finish. But Dale Renard Jr. finish, unfortunately, for the throttle, she'll finish fourth. Oh, that fuel strategy just bitter. Nick Kern falling back about two seconds there. Bob Hutchins, his bit strategy didn't quite work out the way he was hoping for. And the Todd just ran out of fuel. He, still, he lost all his fuel. But he is your race winner here tonight. He pulls off the upset and the shocker of all shockers. Todd Tufts is a champion at long last here on PT Racing TV. And what a crazy night to say the least here to be able to pull that off and then some. But you got to admire the guy for his credit and dedication to pull this one in and pull it out to the end. He gave nothing. He had nothing really going in. And tonight he now has everything as we deliver the Pottles Raps race results now on screen. Jeffrey Todd Tufts for the first time in his career takes it to victory lane in the 72. Second goes to Jason Reif after a strong finish there. Just fell one lap short of victory. Third goes to Cindy the Colzer Taylor. Fourth to Chantel Throttle Bottle. Fifth to Nick Kern. Sixth to Bob Hutchins. Seventh to Matthew Hoffert. Eighth to Keith Checkmate Taylor. And then ninth to Robert the Rouse and Khan. Rounding out the field as we close the show. It looks like Nick Kern's going to give a little bit of a bump draft here to old Todd here. I'll be honest with you folks, I'm going to be interested to see uh, what the heck is going through Todd Tufts' mind in a minute. Coming away with that one. Yeah, he's going to get a little bit of help there over two here, but we're going to go ahead and bring him in now real quick here on the show. Jason Reif coming home with a second place finish here, here tonight. And, uh, t you know, Jason, I mean, it's just one lap, man. That's all it was that cost you that one. Yep, that was a good race tonight. Uh i let that one go. No, nah, I wouldn't say let it go. I think it was just, um, honestly, it just came down to strategy and playing out the run. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to predict how that fuel goes here. I mean, with the motorsports, it's, anything's possible. I and mean, we thought that when you were going out there with Cindy the Closer Taylor, you two were going to battle to the end. But we didn't take into account about fuel strategy on that last bit. What, um, well, How much fuel did you have when you were battling out to the end there? Uh, I was going to be probably three laps short the way I calculated it. So that's why I decided to go ahead and pit, and I seen Cindy pit, so I was like, you know, just go ahead and roll with it. You roll with it, and ro rolled almost perfectly into victory lane here tonight, but still, nevertheless, Ben, you gave her all she had and then some. I've got to ask you, my friend, who do you want to thank her for the second place finish? Yeah, I'd like to thank my family for letting me uh, spend a couple hours here on iRacing with you all, and uh, I'd like to thank PTM, uh, you, Chris, and whoever's in the – broadcast room with you tonight uh you guys do an awesome job and, uh, we'll give it a shot next week for sure there jason congratulations on second place finish man thank you sir Bye -bye. coming home with a race win there a couple of weeks ago at texas more speedway just fell short of the win here tonight at charlotte more speedway but i can say right now it seems like rife is the guy to keep an eye on on tri ovals cindy the closer taylor with the third place finish here tonight decided she did not want to talk with us as usual but that's okay We'll always give her a little shout out, and now I think it's been a, I think it's forever and a day. He's wanted to hear this, but Jeff Jeffrey Todd Tufts puts it into victory lane here tonight, and 
Todd, I gotta believe right now, man, you are through the roof on this one. Can't hear nobody. You got a copy there, sir. Todd, you got a copy, bud? Uh, apparently, you might need his mic if you step there. Producers, didn't you get down there and try to figure out how to get his his mute word there? Hey, I'm here. All right, we got him here. Hey, Todd, man, talk, and talk about this one, man. You pulled away with the fuel run held out to the end and pulled away with the victory. How, what the heck was going through your mind there on those few laps? It was nice to actually win one for a change. But uh, them guys were a lot faster than I was. I just kind of figured I'd take a chance on fuel and I, me and Chantel were pretty much the only ones who were so it came down to me and her and I just had a little bit more than her I guess for sure there and uh, I mean it was really one of those kind of situations it could have gone either way obviously she slowed down quite a bit to try to conserve just enough but just fell a little bit short by the waistband and you were able to hold out and finish this out here I had to ask you man what how did you able to manage that run and manage that life out that way a little bit of luck, basically, and I just kept driving, that's all. Try to stay with the draft as much as I could. You're sure there. Well, nevertheless, Todd, who got you here to victory lane for the first time this season? I'd just like to thank uh, some of my sponsors, LBT Pallets, Brad Warden, Mortgages, and you guys for putting on this race. For sure there, man. Congratulations. What a, what a win and what a way to come out swinging through this one. Yeah, it was nice to get one for a change. For sure there. That's... Congratulations there, Todd. Thanks again. Todd tells, ladies and gentlemen, the 72 puts it into victory lane for the first time in his career. And what a crazy night it's been. The big wreck on the first couple laps. And then all of a sudden it clears out. And now we had this crazy finish. Charmore Speedway, the very first track in eye racing we ever brought to you, and now it's pretty much the track that I think we always have to visit. This track is just, man, it is something. But nevertheless, here tonight could have been been brought to you without the good friends over McCoy Setup Shop, Matt Mills Racing Team, Bob's Custom Trophies and Gifts, SimRacingMerch.com, GridFinder.com, The Butt Kicker. FEGPC.net, Brandon Minix, Sim Racing, Bottles Wraps, and of course Green Tech Energy for all their support, everything they've done. Thank you again. Thank you all those fans that coon out into these shows every time out. We love you guys. We can't get enough of you guys, and we hope you've enjoyed this one to the end. For now, though, I must vanish off to the Shadow Realm tomorrow night. I'm going to be pretty much stuck in one place, Watkins Glen. We've got two races that night. Pushing Limits Racing League with the Lamborghinis. You heard me. Lamborghinis. The first time we've ever showcased them on PT Race TV. My God, you don't want to miss it. And then the IROC series take up right after that. So don't have to travel too far tomorrow. We're pretty much in the same place. But from all of us here at PT Racing TV, we'll see you next time when the green flag flies tomorrow night at Watkins Glen International.